If you're still using any of these digital marketing trends, you need to stop right now. If you want to transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Wes McDowell here for The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed yet, you're going to want to click that little subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. Okay, so digital marketing is one of those things that just keeps evolving over time. It never sits still for a minute. So there's a lot of things that you may be still using that are considered outdated, uh, that could even be harming the health of your conversions in your website. So today I'm gonna to go over some of those outdated trends that you're definitely gonna to wanna to ditch uh, in 2018 going into 2019. So let's get right on with the list. Number one is text-based eBooks as a lead magnet. So why is this something you should ditch? Because a couple years ago, the thought of an eBook was a little more exciting to people. They thought this is gonna be really something big they can sink their teeth into but so many people have been doing this for so long and most people kind of do it wrong and they sh they've just put out really skimpy, unsatisfying eBooks and people have caught on to that and people kind of know now that they can expect something that's going to not live up to their expectations. So what do you do instead if you can't do the eBook as the lead magnet? Well, I definitely recommend replacing that eBook with something that's a little more valuable, specifically something that's highly engaging. I would recommend things like a video series or a quiz or a five day challenge of some kind that really gets people involved and promises a result at the end of it. Okay, number two is focusing on quantity of blog posts over quality. So it used to be that people just were on a, a time crunch and they basically were on a, an editorial schedule wanting to push out two or three blog posts a week, thinking that Google was really going to reward the consistency. And to be honest, they used to, but now Google's moving toward uh, user signals. So basically what that means, they're rewarding things like time on page and how far a user scrolls down the page as the real signals to determine if it's good quality or not. So the fix here would just be to focus more on the quality. Even if that means you're putting out fewer posts, you're really gonna make sure each one counts. So do your keyword research, make sure that it's a blog post that people are going to be searching for, and then make it long enough for Google to really see it as an authoritative piece. So what I recommend is generally over 2,000 words now. Blog posts used to be more around 600 to 1,000 words, but Google's really rewarding those 2,000 word plus posts these days. And not only do you need to use enough words, you need to use the right words. So instead of keyword stuffing your, your posts with, with one specific phrase that you really wanna rank for, which was kind of how uh, we used to do it a few years ago, now Google's really rewarding uh, relevant keywords to your topic because Google's gotten much better at understanding overall topics uh, this past year. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is come up with a lot of relevant words to your topic so that Google knows that you're putting out a piece with really great coverage on your topic. For example, for the deep end site, you know, we, do, we offer web consulting and web design. So Google would expect to see words like WordPress or e-commerce or development on that page. So go deep with your content, you know, show your expertise without using uh, industry heavy jargon. You're definitely gonna wanna write it conversationally and format it for the web uh, using short sentences, short paragraphs, bullet lists, images, all that good stuff. Basically, you wanna make it really easy for your visitors to scan the page since that's how about 80% of people will consume your content. All right, and number three on our list is relying on organic or free social posts alone. Now the reason you're gonna to wanna to ditch this tactic is because organic reach has gone down drastically over the past few years. So basically what I'm saying is if you have a Facebook page and you're just making Facebook posts thinking that all of your page followers are going to see that post, they're not. It's really only about two to 3% of your pages 
fans that'll ever actually see your posts. So unfortunately, the time has come to put a little bit of money behind these posts. But it's not all bad news because they offer really great targeting options. So you can not only hit the people that are actually fans of your page, you can also go after highly relevant cold traffic, which is the only way to really scale your business. Because think about it, if you're only talking to the people that already know your brand, you're not really able to grow at a high rate. But be careful, just because you're going from free posts to paid ads doesn't mean you should be you know, hitting people over the head with promotional ads. They should still be helpful, relevant content. Then you can retarget that the people who have read through that content with the more promotional style ads that you may be used to. Okay, next we have generic automated email blasts that just go out to all of your subscribers. So the reason this is a mistake is your email list is gold. Your email list is still the most valuable resource you have as a business, more valuable than social because you own it. So what you don't wanna do is waste that by putting the same generic message in front of everybody. So what you wanna do is segment that list within your email program like a MailChimp or Drip. So you can segment people based on activity level. Uh, meaning, have they read your emails or do they ignore them? You can send different messages to people with different levels of activity. You can also send different messages to uh, the different ways they got on your list in the first place. So let's say you have a list of actual buyers, customers, and then you have a list of people who have just subscribed to either a newsletter or a lead magnet you're gonna to wanna to talk to those groups very differently. For instance, for your existing customers, maybe you wanna send them an email about an add-on service or product that'll enhance what they've already got. And just for your more casual subscriber list, you might wanna send them an email about sort of an entry-level product or service that if they buy that, they're more likely to buy more down the road. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is using keyword stuffed web pages. So Google is much smarter than it used to be, and it now understands overall topics of a page. And it actually rewards pages that go in depth into a topic over just using and reusing the same keyword phrase over again. So here's the fix. Rather than using the same keyword phrase over and over again that you wanna rank for in Google, uh, what you wanna do is use that phrase a few times, maybe once in a headline, and a time or two in the body text, but you're also gonna to wanna to supplement that with a lot of closely related keyword phrases, specifically phrases that Google would expect to see on a page covering that topic. So you can go to a website called lsigraph.com and just put in the keyword phrase you wanna rank for, and it's gonna give you a list of all the other words that Google thinks possibly should be on that page. Now, of course, use your discretion and only use the ones that really make sense for your specific case. And then you can put in your page in a really natural, readable way. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna definitely wanna stop doing right now is talking at your potential customers rather than talking to them. So basically, so conversations are the new conversions. And if you're basically just pushing a lot of information out there with no follow-up and no conversation taking place, you're really pushing away a large chunk of your business. So what I would recommend here is just simply adding several opportunities for these conversations to happen on your website and keeping up with them. So for instance, you could have a chat feature on your website that can pop up um, when someone has scrolled down a certain percentage of the page, just asking if they have any questions. And the cool thing about these chat features is they can be wired to go right to your phone. So someone has a question, it just pops up on your, on your smartphone and you can answer in real time. And let's say you have a blog section on your, on your site or videos. So basically at the end of a blog or at the end of a video, you're just gonna wanna ask if they have anything to add to the conversation, if they have any questions. And just give them the opportunity to talk with you and let them know that it's expected and it's okay. But it's not enough just to prompt these questions. You have to actually respond to them. Respond to every comment, every question you get, and it's a great way to build that engagement and really play the long game. And in the end, you're gonna get a lot more customers from that engagement. And that just so happens to segue perfectly into this. So basically, are you using any of these currently on your site? 
Are you planning on ditching any of them? I wanna know all about it. I want you to leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you're doing now and how you plan on changing it going into 2019. So leave the comments below. And of course, I'm just a comment away. If you have any questions, leave them down there as well and I will get to all of them. All right, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe right over here in the circle icon. And if you haven't accessed my free mini course yet, how to guarantee website ROI, it's really easy. You just click the box right over here and you'll get free access to that. All right, guys, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End and I'll see you in our next video.